All right, welcome to the, I guess, entry and exit of my home theater 2.0. Uh, I just sold this house, uh, so I'm gonna be gutting the theater, but I wanted to capture this footage before we left, even though I don't have it completely dialed in the way that I wanted to. Uh, if you haven't watched the original videos of me tearing the thing down to the studs and wiring up all the all the, um, uh, the speakers and pre-wiring everything, uh, go check that out. Uh, but uh, I'm going to give you an update tour uh, and uh, just to kind of give you some reference. If you haven't watched those videos, my house is over there. This is a covered breezeway area. And then this was like an office slash closet. We'll show you the backside of, of this of the of the theater as well. In, in the closet there, show you the rack that we put in. Um, but this was a you know the previous owner's uh, um, uh, like his trophy room for deer heads and stuff. I thought it'd be a perfect theater because it's detached from the house, and you could come out here and let it rip and not wake up the whole family uh, during during the day. So let's go inside here show you what uh, what changes have been made and uh, I want to preface this video by saying it doesn't do me any good to play you a movie so if you're here to watch a movie on a YouTube video you probably just want to turn it off now because I'm not there's no reason to do a demo because you'd be listening through your headphones or, or your laptop speakers and watching on your 12 inch or your seven inch, six inch phone. So I think um, it's kind of pointless to show you that and then us have copyright content issues and stuff like that. So I'm gonna show you all the stuff. Go watch your own theater if you wanna hear what theater sound like. So I'll just preface that right now. So let's go inside. All right, so let's chat. I'm gonna tell you what to go, what's doing in here, what all the stuff is. Just know that if you're a home theater guy and you're used to the home theater guys, um, I'm pretty long-winded. So I'm gonna give you all the detail here. Skip around however you want. Um, but this, this room here is, I believe, 16 by 18. The only real problematic areas are the fact that there's a window here and this little bump out that I thought about framing out. Uh, and then the door over here um, is problematic. I really wanted to do corner soffits on the front and rear stage of the room, but we couldn't do that uh, without me doing some major construction. So those are the two sort of acoustic problem areas. Um, I grew up loving, you know, stereo, car stereo, uh, and then kind of got into home theater. I worked for uh, Bryn Mawr Stereo uh, in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania uh, when I was in college. Uh, they became Tweeter, moved down here, worked for Sound Advice in Florida uh, after college for a few years until I ended up at Merrill Lynch. Uh, but one of the things I'd always dreamt of was having just a room. Not a, I don't want, I didn't want a, um, a, uh, a tiered or what do you call that? Uh, uh, what do you call it when they put the fricking stages um, of seating? Tiered seating or risers. I didn't want a bunch of risers. I didn't want home theater seats. I, I just don't like those things. Those weird, like, I want to be able to lay down. So I want a comfortable couch. I want super plush, comfy carpeting. Um, I don't want some weird purple walls or some sconces and, and fabric everywhere. I just wanted a room with, uh, with pretty decent acoustics, a nice couch and carpeting uh, that I could lay down for me, not for my friends, not for some extended uh, family that may come like once every seven years, but for me. Uh, and so that's what this room ended up being. Uh, and uh, I'll talk about some of the changes I'd make uh, if I do it again, which I probably will at some point. But let's talk about the gear. So originally, if you go back to 1.0 version of my home theater, I had a 77-inch OLED in here, actually 65 to start, because that's the biggest they made, then 77. And uh, this is, reminds me a lot of uh, when I had uh, my um, bare concrete floors in my previous house. And I woke up one morning, I said, you know what? I hate epoxy floors, but I'm going to do it, and we're going to do it better. And it turned out to be a freaking disaster. Well, same thing happened with the projector. So I woke up one day. I've, I've never liked projectors. I've sold many, many projectors in my life. Uh, and uh, in, uh, when I was selling home theater, um, I never wanted one, swore I'd never get one. Uh, and I woke up one morning and said, you know, they've gotten a lot better. And we have 4K native projectors now. Um, we could get a 2.35 to 1 screen. Um, this will be great. Let's do it. 
And so it's been cursed since the beginning, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit after we go through the gear. So the way the configuration is set up is uh, it's 7 dot four dot I guess technically two because uh, even though we have four subwoofers it's really a, a left and right you know configuration just a left and right pair if you will um, but uh, the seven is the center these are Revel Performa threes this is a C208 and then um, the 208 sides uh, and then we have uh, in the rear I've got um, um, four rears so back surrounds side surrounds I forget the model number of those, but they're the matching Performa 3 rear speakers. Uh, and then overhead, we have the um, sort of front and rear Dolby Atmos. Uh, they're, I believe, C783 Rebel Performas um, in their 8-inch Wolford um, um, uh, rear uh, rear or overhead height presence Atmos speakers, so the, the height version of the speakers. Uh, and then we have the four subwoofers that I made. I originally had a JTR um, a 4000 ULF in the corner here, which was super corner heavy. Um, this, I've tried different configurations with this setup. I actually had two 18s in the front and two in the rear. And uh, when I got rid of the, the OLED, freed up space because I didn't have a cabinet here any longer, um, putting the four 18s in the front. It's just a lot easier to, you know, to, to tune, if you will. Uh, and so the, the speaker configuration is set up in a 7.4.2 setup. Um, I have uh, SVS, uh, just some cheap SVS speaker wires running to the fronts. Each front is bi-wired and bi-amplified. Actually, not bi-wired, just bi-amplified. So there are two sets of wire running to each uh, to each speaker, one for highs and mids and one for lows. Uh, and those are being powered by the Theta Grand amplifiers. So part of the setup of the concept here was that uh, when I took out the big restoration hardware cabinet that I had running across the front here where all these speakers are, um, I was able to bring this, the, the, um, the front speakers in and back a little bit so they, they, they sound a little better. Um, and uh, I could bring the subwoofers inside of the front stage, which is preferred. Uh, and then uh, we decided, uh, the home theater company I used uh, decided or made a, a good point, why don't we put a rack in the wall and put all of our equipment there and just cut it back through into the room behind us. And so in here is where we have our components. I like simple, really, really simple. <clears throat> Apple 4K, Lutron Caseta, so that's the, the, does the Lutron Serena shades and the lighting. Um, my, um, whatever you call it, modem, cable modem, uh, Logitech. I, you know, I had a Control 4 remote in here. I've had Crestron in the past. Um, I had Elon in the past. I freaking hate that stuff. I can never, never get it to work right. Um, you're always calling the people to come have it fixed all the time. Uh, and so I like uh, the basic Logitech Ultimate because I can just program right from my phone in two seconds when something changes in, in the setup. When we did the projector and changed components, it took me two minutes to, to set up. Uh, uh, the UDP820, um, or sorry, DPUB820 from a Panasonic 4K player, uh, Furman uh, Elite 20. Uh, power factor elite 20 power factor line conditioner uh, Yamaha CXA 5200 in the past I had the Marantz AV8802A uh, the Yamaha sounds so much better to me sonically it's just so much smoother um, not as bright um, I just think that it, it sounds uh, considerably better and then the two what are these model number I forget yeah TGA 7201 uh, and so these are two seven channel amplifiers uh, so we have 14 channels of amplification of course i'm using six of those channels in the front here and then our remaining channels are going to single amplification for all the all the rear speakers subwoofers are powered on their own and these are subwoofers that i made go check out that video um, i built these using daytona and parts express uh, this the subwoofer box configuration they actually work pretty well i'm not much of a homemade kind of guy I wanted to do a three or four Captivator JTR subs, but that was like you know ten or eleven thousand bucks that I just didn't want to spend. These ended up costing about seven hundred bucks a piece. Clearly inferior to the the four thousand ULF, uh, but I wanted to try it. And the plan was to put these in my garage or some, some at some point and uh, and upgrade to either like JL Gotham's or you know JTR Captivators of some sort, which I'll probably do in my next 
home theater, home theater 3.0 in a different location. Okay, so here's the back side of the room. This is the back wall. This is the closet for all the kids stuff. This is how, if you ever uh, build a house and you want to have a garage where you don't have it loaded with like wheelbarrows and uh, garbage, uh, kids' bikes and stuff like that, then to have something like this. So my water heater and water filtration is there. But this is the back side of the front stage, the wall that you see in the home theater. And then the concept or the idea here in, in my home theater 2.0 was to was to cut this in into the wall, cut it, put the bring the equipment back into this room here. Uh, this room isn't conditioned, but it does have a heat pump uh, water heater, and so it stays pretty cool. And there's a block wall on the outside here, so it's uh, it stays pretty pretty comfortable, pretty cool. So this here is a two dedicated 20 amp circuits. Uh, one is running all of the components and the other two are the two amplifiers so or the other the other outlet so amplifiers and then the Furman plugs directly into here and you can see our you know wiring for our uh, for our speakers and subwoofers and all of that but I don't understand what happened something lightning uh, so the humming that we talked about on the subwoofers I don't know what to do we're about to tear this whole theater apart anyway so I'm not uh, I guess I'm not gonna fix it and so in here, when we got hit by lightning, I also ended up with problems with my internet as well, the cable. Uh, and so I ran a new dedicated line. Uh, I don't use cable TV anymore, so we're only using uh, internet. So I ran a direct line. The feed to the house comes right here. So they ran a new line out to the box, a new line from the box to the street. Uh, and then, uh, so we've gotten, we get about, I get about 700, six to 700 megabits per second download, about 800 if I'm plugged in uh, on, on gig, gig speed internet is what it's rated. So you can see the backside here. It was a lot cleaner uh, when I added the internet stuff. My wiring skills are nowhere near as good as the home theater guys, um, but uh, we do have a pretty sophisticated setup here. Man, I just wish that, I wish that I could figure out, I, I, I think maybe the, <clears throat> I think maybe the Yamaha got hit, um, so I think that we maybe we have another issue with this. this is my second um, uh, CXA5200, uh, but it's only the subwoofers that are problematic and only uh, in idle mode. Uh, but you can see amplifier, amplifier, Yamaha CXA5200 uh, preamp. Uh, so these are Theater Grand uh, T. What are these? Uh, TGA. I forget what they're called, 2007 or something like that. Uh, or Furman. This is my uh, Ubiquiti Dream Machine, eight port switch. Uh, the uh, Panasonic uh, DP UB820. Um, my remote controls are sitting up here. My uh, Lutron Caseta Apple 4K. And then the, uh, the cable modem is up here as well. So that's the back side of the theater which is all about to be torn out here because I'm moving. Oh, this is a, uh, the rack is from Strong. It's a Strong rack. I guess is the competitor in the Middle Atlantic. So that's the component setup. And then I went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on what I should do with the projector uh, and when I decided to do one. And so I, I wanted to do the JVC, uh, either NX, like what is it, NX7 or NX9, um, and uh, decided to do the Sony um, just out of sheer yeah, impulse. Um, I talked to the home theater company that I had to do this, and um, they're big Sony advocates because of the reliability of the Sony. Uh, and, um, and so even though the, the black levels are you know, superior on a, on a JVC, uh, I chose the Sony and um, and and then screen um, what you're looking at is a Studio Tech 100. This is a Stewart screen. Uh, I let the home theater company spec me a, a 120. Uh, this is a 120, 120 inch diagonal. Uh, 2.35 to 1 is the aspect ratio. Um, I let them spec me a Screen Innovations, what was it called? Uh, it was the black shiny one. Shoot, uh, we'll put it in the in the in the description or in the uh, 
underneath the video here. Uh, but any the, the, the name will come to me in, uh, after after the video. But we got, ended up with all kinds of sparkle. I don't even know sparkle was a thing. Um, and uh, apparently that's a really common issue with a screen that has too much gain. So it had a gain of 1.4. Uh, and then off-axis viewing, I forget what the viewing angle was, but it was something like, yeah, I don't know what it was, but the, the viewing angle was pretty tight and the sparkle was, uh, I couldn't handle it. So going from OLED, direct view, um, sources that creates its own light um, to a projector is something that I've never wanted to do because of the disadvantage in, in quality, picture quality. I'm a bit of a video file uh, and um, I love an ISF calibrated properly to set up a display and projectors. I know that many of you are gonna be yelling at the screen here, but projectors just don't, don't provide you that same level of quality. Uh, those of you guys who buy the $2,000 or $1,000 Epsons, I think are nuts. I just can't, can't do it, can't even look at it. Uh, and so this is a VPL uh, VW695ES. What is it, a, you know, an eight, nine, ten thousand dollars projector, depending on where you buy it. I think uh, I think it paid seventy five hundred bucks or something for it, something some something like that, six or seven thousand bucks for it. And uh, and so I woke up, did that, abdicated, passed it off to the home theater company, said you do your thing, and I've had nothing but problems since. <laughs> but so what happened is uh, we ran HDMI, and the first thing they ran is they ran um, uh, HDMI a hundred foot run um, that wouldn't pass uh, sixty hertz. And, uh, and so it wouldn't even pass 30 hertz, so it didn't work. Uh, and so then we ran a fiber optic cable, and that fiber optic cable was only rated at 30 hertz, uh, or it was a, like a 12 gigabits per second um, passable cable. And so then I finally contacted, uh, was it Lou uh, Santanella on the home theater, uh, home theater group uh, that I'm in, and uh, he sent me a tested, powered, uh, truly fi true fiber optic cable, and uh, it still won't pass uh, 60 hertz, um, even though I tested 60 hertz on the Apple 4K. But it easily passes 60 hertz 444 on the uh, 444 Chroma on the on the Panasonic um, uh, uh, player. So I think what I may need to do is swap out the uh, cables. I'm using all BlueJean cables, BlueJean HDMI, which should be 18 gigabits per second. It shouldn't be a problem to run it to a foot or two feet that 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 we're running the cables, but. I still have problems, so I have the Apple 4K TV set to 4K 30, uh, 422, I believe, or maybe even 420 uh, is what the Chrome is set to, so that's a huge disadvantage. So the next room I do, I'll make sure to run some, uh, I'm gonna run some PVC conduit so I can pull lines through myself uh, and not have a problem. So that's problem number one. And then problem number two is the company ran all the lines, the HDMI and power. So we run power back to the Furman. Everything's plugged into the Furman. Furman's been fine, uh, but yet the preamp and the projector blew up. But the Furman, no problem. Well, come to find out, um, and I didn't even think about this, but they ran in order to make it easier, the, this, above this room peaks. Uh, and so they ran the, uh, the lines up to the peak of the roof. We got hit by lightning and it blew up the projector. A brand new projector had like two hours on it and blew up my uh, relatively new, but even more importantly, calibrated um, preamp. So it, I had, uh, shoot, what was his name? Uh, like world-class, world-renowned renowned tuner uh, came here and set the uh, EQ, um, you know, moved some of the acoustic treatments around, really tuned the room perfectly and, uh, and set, up, set up the preamp, which of course, I'm an idiot. I've never had a piece of electronic ever blow up from lightning. In fact, I still have like, uh, you know, my old B&K receiver about out in the garage and, you know, I, electronics tend to last forever for me. Well. This is just like when I did epoxy floors in my garage and it turned puke yellow and purple and, and pink uh, in a few weeks and then was super slick and my son was busting his head on it every week. Same thing happened with the projector that I don't like and didn't want to do. But I bought into the, it's not a home theater immersive experience unless you, unless you do it uh, that way. 
And so now we have a projector. Uh, good news, I'm about to rip this whole room apart. Um, but the projector kind of works. Um, they came and did the screen, and there's a little, 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 little jank in the corner here. So they didn't put the screen together square. Uh, so I'll have to fix that. But what did solve a lot of problems is to go back to an old school Unity Gain complete off-access, 100% off-access viewing so I can sit on all sides and get the same light output. Um, I, everybody's telling me you gotta paint the room black. I'm like, bull crap, I don't buy that. We've done Unity Gain screens forever. So this is a 1.0 gain screen with awesome off-access viewing. This is a Stuart, uh, Stuart Studio Tac 100 and it's freaking ace. Black level's great. Um, getting rid of, there's no sparkle. Uh, the, the sparkle is like this little glitter looking stuff you see on all the bright edges uh, and when you have a high gain screen, which I didn't freaking ever even consider. You know, back in the old days, we didn't really have those options. You know, had a couple of different screen types and you had a Stuart Firehawk a Stuart, uh, and a Stuart Studio Tech and those are like the only two options you had. And, um, and you had a DLP, you know, if you spent 25 grand, you got a three chip projector, DLP projector. Uh, but now, you know, this LCD, I think single chip, chip LCD, you know, 4K, 60 native uh, 4K projector uh, on this screen, I've, I'm telling you, it's way freaking better. I'm so glad that I traded out that 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 um, screen innovation screen. Just didn't do something like diamond black or so. I don't know. I can't remember the name, but it was a, a 1.4 gain screen. So then, uh, and then lies the last problem that I have with the, with the setup is that uh, now I have a major hum, <laughs> like some sort of ground loop. I think the same thing happened when it blew up the, uh, the, the system. I think I may have blown up the uh, second CXA5200 before we took the wires from the peak, ran them down under, you know, the, under the floorboards upstairs, uh, and we haven't had really a problem with lightning since. Um, but I've tried, I've had Humex, I've bought uh, this other box here. Figures it's not humming right now. I think maybe because the uh, air conditioner isn't running. But I bought this, uh, yeah, this Isomax in order to isolate. And then I've had to run some janky wires across the carpet here to get my subwoofer. So at least I have a functioning theater for the first time in, I think I decided to do this in March. It's November. And I might watch a movie tonight. And uh, now I've got to take the screen off the wall and try to get it square. So I may just watch some slightly crooked image. It's a freaking disaster. <laughs> So this is the first time in my life that I didn't like do everything myself, uh, especially when it comes to theater and you know lesson learned. You know they, the the guys, the installers don't give a crap. So anyway, we've we've got what we got. So the room is set up centered, so it's off center, centered on my off center couch seating position. This is a Lazy Boy, I believe it's called the Lazy Boy Devon. Um, couch and um, the beauty of this couch. This is a couch I, I had the same type of couch in my first house. Um, super comfortable. I lay across the middle. You know, kids will lay across it so we could fit. You know, our four family members here on this couch, or one, two, three, four, five, six people. The couple of people on the floor. Again, I didn't build this for other people. I built it for me. Uh, and um, you know, it uh, it really has served me well until I decided to put the projector in. Uh, but uh, it is, you know, if, if I wasn't moving, I would have this thing, you know, I would have it really set up. I've just been procrastinating on it because, again, I shouldn't have done a freaking projector. Uh, the other problem with this is this darn mini split has been problematic since day one. Uh, I have to have it recharged like once every six months because it's freaking junk. Uh, but it's a Carrier Infinity, one of the first generation ones, garbage. So, yeah, we're, uh, the carpet is nice though. Seven pound, um, seven pound uh, a pad underneath. Super, super plush. Oh, it's freaking great. So acoustically, the way that this room is set up with acoustic treatments, this is a GIK acoustic. Um, this takes care of our first reflection point, second reflection point. Um, I needed, you know, the screen actually has helped, but I really need some treatment on top here. Um, and then we have a cloud, so an overhead, what they call a cloud type acoustic panel uh, across what was centered, but I sh when, I did the, when I did the screen, I shifted a little bit, so it's a little off-center, centered up with my speakers. Uh, and then the back, 
Uh, the back are called monster base traps. So the fronts are 242s from GIK Acoustic. The back have a scatter plate. The one thing that uh, GIK um, made clear to me, you need to be careful with making the room too dead. Uh, so you don't want to steal all, you know, all fun from the room, if you will. You don't want it to become completely dead. Um, you do want a, a little bit of, um, um, you know, you want a lot of absorption, um, but you don't want to, you don't want to um, get rid of every, you know, the liveliness of the theater. So in a perfect world, I would have a corner soffits in the front, but there's no room here. So I'd have corner soffits in all four corners. So notice we spec'd it. So I have the corner soffit going all the way to the ceiling. I have the monster base traps in the back with a scatter plate in the front, uh, and then 242, just, just traditional base traps in the front. Uh, and then, of course, my, um, my rack position is probably not acoustically the best choice because now I have this glass panel here where my speaker is, you know, I'm getting, you know, probably standing waves, you know, bouncing off of it. But my, you know, my captain's chair, my seating position is here and I'm dead center on the center channel. Getting the center channel out of that restoration hardware cabinet was nice. Opened up the center channel. Um, I'm, you know, I'm sitting seated, you know, in the middle here. And actually, I probably would need to move my first and second reflection points. The way you do it is you have someone hold a mirror up, and as soon as you see yourself, as soon as you see the speaker in the mirror, that's when you know you have the first reflection point. Because if you think about this logically, if you're not a home theater guy, you know, the speaker's sending sound out like this. And so what happens is, is I get this standing wave bounce off the wall and then come back to me. So I have the original sound wave coming to me, but then I have the secondary or the first reflection that comes and hits me. And then I have the second reflection that's coming off and hitting that wall and coming back. So I have first and second reflect, first, second uh, reflections that I need to remove. And there's third and fourth and fifth order, I believe. Um, I'm not an expert in acoustics, uh, but I've done a little bit of research to know that uh, what you simply do is you carry a, a mirror along the wall and as soon as you can see the first speaker, that's where your first reflection point is taken care of. And when I can see the second speaker uh, in, the, in the mirror, then that's the second reflection point. And so when I'm sitting here, I want the original sound waves to come to me, but I don't want those second, first and secondary um, interfering with the experience or interfering with the acoustics of the room. <clears throat> same thing happens off the ceiling, same thing happens off the front wall, same thing happens off the back wall. Corners tend to become problematic. Uh, and so um, I would say this is probably 70% uh, appropriate uh, and um, you know certainly improved the room, got rid of a lot of the echo and issue. Uh, but it's not completely dead. Uh, carpeting helps, uh, and then um, um, the the actual the shades help as well. So the way the room is set up, and I, I my next step was to caulk all of this. Uh, but I'd bought uh, Lutron Serena shades with blackout channels, uh, and so when the shades go down, these are all battery powered by D D D cell batteries. A bunch of them, like. 20 of them or something like that. I've never changed the batteries in the two big shades. I think these were like almost $6,000 for the set. I got pretty much ripped off. I think I bought them from a company that really didn't, was new to it, but they're still rather expensive. And so now the room is blacked out. There's a few little gaps that I really would need to caulk um, that was on my list of, uh, of things to, to improve. Um, but uh, to me, this room is a lot like a high-end sports car. It's more fun than it is to really watch stuff. <laughs> you know, it's more fun to buy it and spec it and put stuff together than it is to use it, but that's kind of my MO. Home theater, car, garage, those are kind of my thing. And, um, and so I like, to, uh, I like to chase it. I'm actually excited to, to build another one. So again, if this room, if I could do it again, um, I probably would have turned the room around and I would have, uh, I would have blocked this, just put a false window or blocked this in. And I would have you know, completed the wall here so I had a big flat wall. Um, that would give me more throw distance with projector. I could have done a bigger screen. Um, I probably wouldn't do a projector again, I don't know. Um, I haven't had a projector calibrated yet. So maybe, 
you know, maybe it would end up being um, being a good experience. But I hate the whole changing from from 1.8 1.87 to one to 2.35 to one, and then when you have a 2.4 to one, which in most movies are massive and it doesn't fit the screen, so I'm constantly tweaking it and getting it to work. Because the thing to keep in mind is that. If you're watching Netflix and it's mastered 16 by 9 on a 2.35 to 1 screen, you have big black bars on the side. You know, that's what you, that's the choice you make. The other option is you get a 16 by 9 screen, which fills the screen, but then you have big black bars on the bottom and top and bottom when you're watching a movie. So you're kind of screwed either, either way. And on a projector, it becomes really pronounced, whereas on a, I find on a, on a, like a direct view display, like a, an OLED, then, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to be as big of an issue as it is on the darn projector. I'm constantly changing it. Um, the other thing I learned is that if the projector isn't perfectly flat, you know, there's no keystone adjustment now on modern Sony projectors, you have to get the projector perfectly flat and then lens shift it. And what's created a bit of a problem is that I don't want my freaking screen on the ceiling like every idiot does. I want my screen, I want my eyeballs to be in the, you know, at least toward the middle of the screen when I'm sitting on the couch. So you see most people when they get their TV, they're sitting here and they're watching it like this because the freaking screen's up here. Well, why would you do that? That's stupid. And so I have to get, they had to keep bringing longer and longer poles out. Um, I want the darn screen to be at eye level, uh, and especially if I'm going to lay down on the couch. And so um, I've had to, and I don't know why the home theater company didn't know this, but the, you know, the installers just come out and this freaking projector's like this. And so then when I put on a 16 by 9 image, the bars are like, you know, trapezoids. And then I start doing research. I'm like, well, shoot, maybe my projector's broken because it blew up. The uh, HDMI board blew up, and maybe they messed it up when they repaired it. And uh, sure enough, I figured I found some post somewhere that said that um, you have to have the projector level on a Sony projector. That's how you get rid of any any um, you know any keystone issues where it ends up looking like a trapezoid. So anyway, the projector, I think it can look good. Um, I'll have my friend Jason Dustal Ice have calibrate it, um, but um, I think that this is going to get torn out of here before that happens. We're moving in about 45 days, so I'm going to try to watch a few movies in here. I finally got it working. Amazing. I don't have any hum from the subwoofers. I don't know what the heck's going on here. Um, but uh, yeah, the um, this theater is fun as much as I'm kind of complaining about it. Um, what I'm what I'm getting at is that that pursuit, that endless chase. Sometimes you're better off just leaving well enough alone because when I had the OLED in here and I had the big restoration hardware, hardware cabinet and I had the JTR sub, everything worked famously. And then I wake up one morning and decide I'm going to take it to the next level. And uh, when you do that, it takes extra steps to get right. Uh, and I'm still not quite there yet. Uh, but anyway, this is my theater. It's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's set up well. Um, the next time I do this, if I do it again, um, I'll do something probably pretty similar with maybe a few tweaks. I'd like to build a room inside of a room and really make it so that it's super, super dialed in. My guys upstairs are uh, doing spray foam insulation for the new owners. Unfortunately, I, I paid for that and um, sold the house. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, again, no theater demo. It's not going to do you any good. It looks good. It sounds good. But I'm not sure how you're going to hear that on a set of headphones. So anyway, thanks for watching. And um, Home Theater, I guess, 4.0 or Home Theater 3.0 will be at my new house someday, maybe. Catch you soon.